Copyright in Service Training. Welcome to a brief copyright training for educators. This is Principal Larry. He will talk to you about copyright law. Topics covered today will be Copyright Act, Fair Use, and the Four Factor Test and Guidelines. Would you ever allow a student to copy work from another student? No, of course not. Copyright laws work in the same way. Just like we protect students and their work, copyright law is in place to protect the rights of authors and creators and their works. The Copyright Act protects owners and the works they have produced. Rights of a copyright holder include reproduction, adaptation, distribution, public performance, public display, and digital transmission of sound recordings. So, what does this all mean for teachers? It must, it means we must be informed. Fair use, what is it? The Fair Use grants users conditional permission to use or reproduce certain copyrighted materials as long as they follow certain guidelines which are in place to protect the rights of the authors. The first factor are things to consider. Is your use for nonprofit educational use? Is your use for criticism, commentary, or news reporting? Even if your answer is no to the first factor, always consider the other factors. Factor 2. Nature of the copyrighted work. Is the nature of the work fact or is it creative? A simple list of facts are not copyrighted, but if they are expressed in a unique way, then they are most likely copyrighted. Factor 2 published or not published. If it's published, it's protected. If it's not published, it's still protected. Make sure you check the licensing. Factor three, the amount of work used. The less you use, the better. If you use all or even most of a copyrighted work, there will be question. Continue to check the other factors. And factor four, effect of use on market for or value of work. This factor is very important. You need to ask yourself, is what you are doing preventing the owner from making sales? For print, single copies are fine for research and teaching, but don't copy to substitute a purchase. Multiple copies are okay if they meet brevity, spontaneity, and cumulative effect limitations. If you use multiple copies, don't forget to include the notice of copyright. For example, brevity. In poetry, you may use 250 words or less. In prose, you're allowed to use 2,500 words or 10% of the whole, whichever is less. For picture books and graphic novels, two pages is acceptable. For example, would a single copy of this book cover be okay? You could say you were using it for direct instruction. So a single copy of a book cover for direct instruction, both would fall under the acceptable guidelines. But what about this example? Multiple copies of the book cover does not follow the single copies for a teacher's guideline. What about computer software? Make sure you know the license. There are different licenses such as shareware, share alike, and other licenses. Each license has its own set of rules. For example, Ms. Teacher would like to use clip art in her lesson. Instead of downloading images off the web, she checks out software from the library and uses the clip art from the program. Is this okay? Yes, as long as she follows the license. In this example, Miss Teacher is updating her class webpage. She decides to add a link to a program that is allowed access only from the school. Would this be okay? 
Well, no, because the access may be attempted from somewhere other than the school. The internet has no set copyright guidelines. You have to remember that the internet is a mixture of print, music, audiovisuals, multimedia, and software all in one place. You must go to the fair use test. The internet. Ask yourself, what is the purpose of your work? Is it creative? How much of it are you using? And are you causing financial harm to the creator? Audio and visuals both fall under the same rules. Both audio and visuals must be for nonprofit educational use. Audio and visual must take place in a classroom or a similar place like a cafeteria or a gymnasium or a music room. They must involve teachers and students in a face-to-face -face teaching environment. It must be a legal copy and they must be needed for a lesson. You can use the five yes or no questions to guide you. Is it for nonprofit educational use? Yes or no. Is it, is it being used in a classroom or similar place? Yes or no. Teachers and students, are they face to face? Is this a teaching situation? Yes or no. Do you have a legal copy? Yes or no. And is this something that is needed for a lesson? Yes or no. Sorry, but if your answer is no to any of these questions, then you should mo not move forward with the proposed idea, or you can try to remedy the problem factor to prevent infringement. Common malpractices for audio include a music teacher who buys a CD and makes copies for his or her students, or a classroom that performs a popular song as part of their PTC presentation, and they did not ask for permission from the owner. Can a music teacher buy a single copy of sheet music of a Beatles song, make copies, and give to students for them to practice? No. If the teacher is avoiding payment for additional copies, or if the teacher does this performance every year, then that is violating the fair use guidelines. Ms. Teacher wants to perform a particular song for the PTA. She writes a letter asking for permission four weeks in advance and she waits for a response before moving on. Yes, this teacher is following the guidelines as written. Some common malpractices for video include showing videos that are not related to a lesson, using videos for a rainy day recess, using videos for entertainment showings, and using videos for extracurricular activities. Take a look at this example, movie night. The fourth grade is sponsoring a movie night on the 12th of December from 3 to 5.30. The entrance fee is $10 per student, which includes the movie, pizza, and a drink. Would this fundraiser movie night violate copyright? Yes, this violates the rules. First, because it is for profit. Remember, on the flyer, they are charging $10 for entrance. Second, because this movie is not part of a lesson. But could Miss Teacher use a three minute clip of a movie as part of her lesson? Yes, she should have the lesson plan in place showing how the clip is to be used and she should cite that clip. What are the consequences of any copyright infringements? Well, uh, some fines can exceed up to 200 $50,000, um, you can receive up to five years in prison, whether or not a profit is made, these consequences are serious. Here are some tips. Stick to the public domain, use licensed and royalty-free materials, and always refer to the four-factor fair use test and guidelines. Always play it safe. Let's try a hands-on activity to test your knowledge. With your group, I'd like for you to recreate a scene with the script of common violations of copyright laws. Be prepared to perform your script for an audience. Be prepared to state how your scene is in violation of copyright laws. And also be prepared to state how your scenario could be corrected 
so that it does fall within the fair use guidelines. Remember, be cognizant of your actions and remember to refer to the guidelines and tests. If in doubt, ask or find out. Thank you so much and have a great afternoon.